reviews are in and audiences have been captured by Queen and Slim, I'm here with two of the most amazing team who, of course, are behind this movie, director Melina Masukas and actor Daniel Kaluuya. Welcome to The Juice. Thank you. It's great to have you guys both on the show. Welcome to Nigeria. Thank you. So, is this your first time in Nigeria? Yes. How is it going? It's a... <laughs> nice vibe. It's, it's a vibe. vibe? Yeah, I like the people. The people okay. are cool. Jollof's good. You have won our hearts. That's all you have to say. As long as you choose our Jollof rice of Ghana, we will love you forever. Okay. And what about you, Melina? Um, it's amazing. Yeah. I feel like I'm home. It feels like... It's been described as the New York of Africa, and I'm a New Yorker, so... That's a good way to describe you know? it, honestly. So um, I'm here, and I also love Jollof. So... <laughs> Do you guys listen to Nigerian music? Yeah. Okay, who, what's the last Nigerian song you listened to on your playlist? Uh, Burner's, Burner's song on Queen of Slim. My Money, My Baby. My yes. Money, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to get to that, talking a little bit about the soundtrack and, you know, putting that together. Um, but I want to talk about Queen of Slim. I mean, it's being described as a groundbreaking film, you know, showing love, drama, but also talking a little bit about the political atmosphere when it comes to being a black person in race. Um, so I want to hear from you and just talk me to a little bit. What made you guys decide to go on this project? Yeah, I mean, it had so many elements that were important to me, not just as a director or artist, but as a human. Mm -hmm. You know, I love to create work that really pushes the conversation forward, that reflects the time, that challenges the status quo, uh, that speaks to our experiences as black people. And then it was this beautiful black love story, you yeah. know, and I felt like that hadn't been represented on screen in this way before. Um, it felt necessary and immediate, and so I knew I had to tell it. And when you were you know, putting together the cast, what made you decide to say Daniel would be the perfect person you know, to play? Well, Daniel decided he was the best person, <laughs> and then we met, and I was like, yo, what's this gift that just landed in front of me? Yeah. You know, He's a tremendous talent. Um, there's really no other like him of this generation. Uh, and so we were, we were, we were given this gift, you that's, know? That's amazing. And I'm looking forward to seeing it this evening later. Uh, Daniel, you've had an amazing, you know, run. And in so many ways, you're being described as and the next Denzel, but probably you'll be your own version. Yeah. Um, and an icon in that. How does it feel to have this success when it comes to acting? Did you ever think it would end up like this for you? Oh, I wanted, I wanted to, just do things that I believed in, do things that I wanted to watch. I just never thought it would resonate in a kind of mainstream populist sense. Yeah. But I do think I have populist sensibilities. But um, yeah, I don't, I try, I stay out of the results the majority of the time. Just because it kind of can cloud your judgment and mm -hmm. decisions. I just go, this resonates with me. If I'm in the, if I'm around my context uh, and then I'm speaking to my context, like with my friends and my family and my people, and I want to make films for them. That's the microcosm of the larger society. And then just, I don't know, I can, if it travels, then it travels. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just try to stay true with what you it's want to do. It's interesting because I watched an interview where you were talking about your mom and how your mom kept saying, like, is this thing a job? Does she finally think that this is like a real career now? She thinks it's a career. She doesn't think it's a job. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like... The money comes too inconsistently for her. But the money's coming consistently now. It's coming, no, but it's erratic. It's right. like lump sum. Mm. She wants once a week. She wants like, what's happening once a week? So if I trickled it out, yeah. maybe she'd be more convinced. But <laughs> You're from Uganda. Yeah. Family, um, yeah. How do you feel like your heritage is being, you know, African plays into the way you portray your characters and the work you do? I mean, I mean, it's just who I am. It's just part of my identity, part of what makes me me and my values. I think a lot of the kind of blocks that I got at the very beginning and during my career, I think if I, if I wasn't, my values weren't my values, my morals weren't my morals, my, my morals, weren't my morals mm. I would have given up. Mm. But I just believe anything's possible. That's brilliant. And Melina, you're such an amazing director. Um, and it's just a groundbreaking season for women, you know, as directors. Where do you feel, how do you feel like, you know, being a female director, how do you think that plays into the narratives and in the ways you tell your stories? Again, I think it's just who I am, you know. Um, I don't know what the difference is because I can't put myself in a, in a male director's shoes, but I just try to be honest about my experiences and how I see life. I'm sure it's, you know, painted in a much more feminine way um, at times, but also relating <clears throat> to black masculinity in a different way, you know. Especially with Queen and Slim, I, I try to... I think you'll see a different version of masculinity and slim that I really appreciate as a woman, 
you know, and I wanted to honor my brothers as well as my sisters on screen and, and just celebrate who we are as a people. Mm. And in terms of, you know, the climate, do you think you're going to be doing any more films that are specifically on this kind of theme anytime soon? I mean, I think all of my work will probably speak to the black experience in some way because I do, you know, and, and that's what's important to me. Um, whether it's film or video or, or television, um, I love to tell our stories. I would like them not to all be repetitive because yeah, I think course. we have so many stories to tell and, and I, I love diversity in my own work. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll be consistent in that they will all be having to say something. Talk to me a little bit about the soundtrack. Now, we're all excited because we're Nigerian and of course, Burna Boy is yeah. on it. And you know, shout out to Burna Boy. Um, I'm not talking saying like he's my friend. <laughs> he doesn't know me. I, but... I wish he's all of our friends, right? <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about what you were thinking when you were putting the soundtrack. Because I know music plays mm -hmm. such an important role, you know, in the energy of the mu mu movie. And even more so for us as black people when it comes to, you know, how we understand identity. Yeah, I mean, music is everything. You know, I think from when we're born, it's like you hear that drum beat, you have a rhythm. Yeah. As black people, it's like it's just in us. Um, I really wanted to bring back the idea of the soundtrack. Like I grew up with wonderful soundtracks like Love Jones and Boomerang and Nutty Professor. There's even an allusion to, um, to Love Jones okay. in one of the earlier uh, scenes in Queen and Slim. Um, but I wanted to introduce like the young generation to some of the older artists that that are so tremendous and some of the older audience to, to new artists. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted this to show the diversity of who we are as a people and our sounds and our yeah. voices, how we're so connected um, and so different. It shows our history starting from soul, moving to, to hip hop and bounce and into Afrobeat, um, obviously. And also it's, it's a way, it was like a sonic uh, journey for mm. them. You know, I, <clears throat> they travel south in America and I wanted to, I wanted you to, to know geographically where they were by the sounds uh, that they were surrounded by. So when they're in New Orleans, you hear Bounce, which is like the local music there. It's that Megan Thee Stallion yeah, track, which is yeah. popping with Vicky Lowe, who's a local artist. And then when you go to Mississippi, it's the blues and, and so on and so forth. So it was also like this beautiful sonic journey that you're taking through and you can enjoy um, while watching the film and at home. And it kind of brings together a really strong narrative. Um, we're running out of time, but whenever you come to Nigeria, you kind of always have to be crowned and given like a Nigerian name. <laughs> Do you have yours yet? No, Daniel? I haven't got my Nigerian name. Do you have yours? No, no one told okay, me this so tradition. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you guys a... Are we getting crowned? You guys can I'm excited. You know, agree with me whether or not. In the comments, let me know if I gave them good names. <laughs> you are Chioma. Well, like Chioma is an Igbo name. Okay. So I think we all agree. And <laughs> you're going to be Tunde. You're Nigerian. Tunde. Tunde is a Yoruba name. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you think look I'm like Yoruba. you look. You could okay. pass for Yoruba, and you could okay. pass for Yoruba. I know what hey, this hey. means. <laughs> I know You're what it means. You're not a Yoruba demon, who? Uh, I don't know. That's why. <laughs> that's listen. I know what it all means. I see what you're trying to say about me. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, you know. Thank you so much again, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Hopefully your next film, it will, you'll bring back to Nigeria again. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully. Thank you Definitely. for having us. All right, guys, this is The Juice, and of course my name is Balane. Make sure you comment down below and let me know if I gave them the correct names. Do not forget that Queen and Slim is in theaters nationwide. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.